going to do a lot of flavors from Stiltsville for you. So this is a Wahoo. When you cook it, it can get dry really quickly. So anytime you cook with a bone, you're going to have more flavor. Anytime you cook with the skins, you're going to have more flavor. Anytime you cook with a bone, the skins, the fins, it's always going to come out great. We have a couple of different ways that we do whole fish. We steam them or fry them, and it really, really makes a difference. We have up to 10 different fish every night that we serve, and you can kind of pick your sauce and pick your side. So we have all of these leftovers and scraps. We mix all of these fish together, and it makes it a really, really unique textured fish dip. Simply grilled this and smoked it. Usually we put a, a pretty heavy smoke with some cherry wood. But it's all about using every single piece of the fish, from the eyeball to the cheek to the tail to the fin. Trace down the back, and just slide the knife on the other side of the spine and then just slip down this little rib cage here. There's a lot of meat up in this head here. There's a lot of meat behind this jaw here. There's this whole thing that Janine and I nicknamed fish wing. There's a tail here. There's this, this delicious stuff. I make fun of it and call it the potato chip of the fish because when you fry it, it becomes this really amazing potato chip. And I guarantee you after I broke both sides of this down, I would get at least two or three ounces of fish. I'm just gonna lightly score in on him a few millimeters. Drop this guy in the fryer and open up his jaws a little bit like that. And he's going to have these big flakes. You get, yeah. And then I'm gonna ask the chef to throw this guy and butter baste him right here. And so we'll call this a snapper two ways. I'm gonna tell him not to do anything but salt and pepper and maybe a little lemon and butter so that way you can really taste this Caribbean red. I've just flaked all of that Wahoo meat and I don't like to break it up too much. Some aioli, and that's gonna give it a really nice creaminess and kind of balance out some of that smoke. Chopped capers here, this is gonna add that nice brininess. We're just gonna spice it up with a little bit of heat. Then we're just gonna add some mixed herbs. We use chives and dill, but you can use scallions or pickles, onions. So the skin is another point of, of what not to throw in the garbage. So we've been freezing it. We actually give it a quick steam. When it fries, it does give that little puff to it. So we take these scales. I threw these in a pot of water for about 15 minutes with a splash of vinegar, and we cooked it, and it softened it up. We blanched them. Yeah, this is them there. In each of our restaurants, we have a version of fried chicken with a version of this fun powder that really kind of cuts the fat of the fried chicken skin and adds you know, a nice kind of balanced acid to the bite. So yeah, I've just lightly dusted that and we're just gonna go into the oil. People come to our restaurant knowing that they're gonna be able to eat something that they haven't eaten before. The fat marbling in this, I call him like the, the Kobe beef of fish. And we're really trying to educate our diners on other fish that are available and not just you know, your tuna and your salmon and your yellowtail and we have these descriptive notes to kind of help guide our guests through that process of selecting a different type of fish that they haven't heard of before. We've made this really amazing buffalo sauce and that just gets tossed on the outside of the fish wings. They're just usually served with a little lime um, and celery hearts. We're constantly trying to improve and not just stay stagnant in oh, this is the way we've always done it. For me, what I like to do is take like my grandmother's like really classical things that I remember being like super delicious. I try to capture some of her simplicity stuff into my complicated tweezer food. We do a 12 course tasting menu and I went to 10 different tables last night and this is the same thing over and over. What was your favorite dish? Sourdough crusted halibut. The food that you really remember, it's spicy, it's sweet, contrast and texture. We'll take some extra virgin olive oil. So we'll add spring onions shaved, the carrots, so I use a lot of chilies. You don't have to use as many as I do in the recipe. It's a little bit of saffron, but a very small amount. It's very powerful. Salt, literally just mix everything together. Super low temperature. I usually like to do about 20, 25 minutes, but what it does, it gives me just enough time to kind of move on to other projects. This is dried kelp. This is kind of our base to all of our stocks. When we braise chickens, or we braise meats, we always put in kombu with the short rib, and we're gonna rehydrate it with boiling water. We'll put a lid on, and we'll let that steep for about 15 minutes. Halibut skin is not very enjoyable. We kind of recreate our own skin. We take sourdough bread, but we had to literally freeze the whole loaf, put it on a very, very sharp slicer, and it's probably about, I would say about an eighth of an inch. We always season very high. You really get every little piece of the fish, and then we'll take the flesh side down onto the bread and just cut right next 
to the fish. How cool is that, right? And the reason we don't use olive oil for searing fish, it'll start to burn sometimes. So I'll look for a grapeseed oil, safflower oil, canola oil. Butter will start to give it color. The oil will keep it from burning. Wow, look at that. How about a fish you don't want to cook all the way through? You're looking for it to be kind of like a little soft to the touch where it kind of gives in just a hair. People who don't usually like fish find this to be satisfying because it's not fishy. I call this kombu tea. And the way I zest is it's one stroke. The reason is, is if you sit here and go like this back and forth, you start to expose this white bitter pith. It's disgusting. A little bit of salt. It's very soft at this point, right? It's not hard anymore. You fold it right back in. I like to use a finishing salt called Maldon. It doesn't make a saltiness like iodized salt. You really feel like the ocean. This is the secret right here. You can drink this stuff, it's so good. And there it is, guys. Today we're gonna do, um, it's a duo, we've got the chops. These are the Aussie racks. Well, for me, it's natural, you know, it's what I grew up on. The reason why we consistently use it as well is because of the consistency in the product. You know, the export quality is, in my, in my opinion, is second to none with the lamb. The shanks are Australian as well. These are your four shanks. Cut them into an Osso Booker card for a nice presentation on the plate. So we've got cumin, there's oregano, allspice, whole cumin that's been toasted, cinnamon sticks, cloves, tomatoes, chipotle, anato, achiote, uh, lemon juice, and then orange juice, and we just blend them all up. It's just a sauce that, you know, we're gonna braise the lamb in. Banana leaves, lined in a pot here. And these actually not only keep the dish moist, but also impart a nice flavor. Just poached and braised slowly in the sauce. The sauce is just simply pureed, all the spices, everything, the cloves, a few cinnamon sticks in there, a few slices of orange. So just covered and then just placed in the oven. You know, I like to cook around 275 for about three hours, you know, and the meat just simply falls off the bone. So we created a rub that, that works well with all our meats, black pepper, salt, there is some allspice in there. These I'm gonna pan sear. For me, lamb is not a meat that I'll just put salt and pepper on and cook. It needs spices, it needs, it needs heat, it needs acidity. It's, it's all about I, I, what I've found, what goes with it. The side that I'm gonna show you that we, we pair with this dish, it's a multi-grain salad. Folks from Uncle Ben's gave us this, this grain blend, it's got some brown rice in it. Kale is not gonna go away. Cucumbers, and then these grains just poached. Boatload of herbs, mint. Cilantro just rough chopped, stalks and all. Lime juice, some cumin in there, uh, olive oil, the herbs, a little agave to sort of balance things out a little. Lightly tossed, some pickled onions, 